In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the finer points of how to wear your men in kendo. First, I'll go over two different methods of tying your tenugui. When you put on your tenugui, sometimes there's some calligraphy on it or a picture, and you want to have the calligraphy facing you, strictly speaking. If you're in a rush, of course, this doesn't apply, but in theory, you should have the calligraphy facing you so that you can read the calligraphy and sort of reflect on it before you put on your men. So this is the more common method of tying your tenugui. So you want to fold this flap over so that when you put your men on you don't have a flap of tenugui flapping around in the back. And the one point that I'd like to make about wearing your tenugui is that the tenugui shouldn't be too low on your forehead. You want to have it a little bit higher, almost up to your hairline, so that when you put the men on, the mental doesn't really peek through. So if it does show through, it should be just a tiny sliver that shows through. Or better yet, it shouldn't show at all. Now a lot of people tie their tenugui a bit too low, just above their brow. And I'm going to show you what that looks like once you tie your men. As you can see, if you tie the tenugui too low, you can see a lot of the tenugui through the main bonnet, And you don't want that. So when you tie your tenugui, you should try to shift it upwards a little bit so that it's almost near your hairline so that when you put on your men you can't see it through the mengane. So if you wear your tenugui properly then you shouldn't be able to see it through the mengane. Some of the other points to watch out for when you tie your men is the humo should be flat against your men not all bunched up or twisted on both sides and you should tie the knot in the back at the same level as your eyes. A lot of beginners tend to tie their menhimo a bit too low around here. And what that does is it pulls your mendare against your ears and your ears will start hurting. The other thing is your menhimo should all be the same length and the distance from the knot to the end should be no longer than 40 centimeters. It can be shorter if you want, but it shouldn't be longer than 40 centimeters. There are also some things to keep in mind as you take off your men. As you undo your men anymore, you want to keep the himo tidy. This is what I do. Other people will do this. But whatever you do, you don't want your men himo flapping all over the place as you take off your men. So I grab it like this. Then you pull the mandare away from your ears to loosen it up. And then you have to grab the chin. A lot of people grab the sukidare here, and that's a big no-no. Grab your chin, the lower rungs of the mengane, and then take it off. Once you've taken off your men, you hide your face behind the men. Then you take off your tenugui, and then if you need to wipe your face, you wipe your face. And then when you're done, put the mental, the tenugui, in the men. And then you can lay it down on your kote. And I'm going to show you another method of tying your tenugui. This one, you hold the center of the tenugui with your mouth. And then you tie it in the center of your forehead. Doesn't have to be a double knot, 
because you're going to lift up the tenugui and that's going to hold it in place. Okay, same thing here. You want to pull the tenugui up on your forehead a little bit so that when you put on your men, the tenugui doesn't show through. Okay, and make sure the top is neat. Some people prefer this method because it covers the ears. And that's another method. There's also another method that's often used by children, and that's where you pre-fold the tenugui, and then you just slip it on. But that's generally for kids, so I wouldn't recommend that for adults. You may think that there are too many things to remember in kendo, but after a while, all these things become second nature. And when you pay attention to these minor details, it sort of adds a certain elegance and uh, presence to your kendo. So I think it's worth remembering.